Hi, I'm Michael Hill with Canine Chronicle TV, and I'm here today with Dennis McCoy and Randy Guerin, um, who were made famous for mainly poodles, right? Correct. Mm -hmm. Was that both of yours first breed? Mm -hmm. Yep. And what what has been your involvement kind of through your time in dogs? I know you started out as handlers, right? Correct. And we've been breeders? Actually, I started out showing my own dogs in really? juniors when I was like thir 12, 13 years. Was that a poodle old. as well? That was a toy poodle, white toy poodle. So it's yeah. been a lifetime involvement for Randy. When did you first start? Same thing. Really? Mm -hmm. How did you get into the show in the first place? What was your exposure to a dog show? I bought a wonderful dog. An import. An import of Missouri. Really? And I took it to my... I thought it was pretty exciting. From the newspaper ad, I went to get it a collar at Sears and Robux. And from there, the lady said to me, have you ever been, is your dog a show quality? And I said, oh, I'm sure it came all the way from Missouri. Well, I did take it in. And then I only had one testicle, but she proceeded to tell me there was a match. And I went to the match that following Sunday. And I said, oh, mine is not so good. So I bought a dog right there. Really? And then I began from there to learn and kept getting better and better. Did you ever work for another handler before you started handling on your own? No, I didn't. I handled and finished my own. I did send one of my dogs, two of my dogs out actually, mm -hmm. to a handler to finish. And then I got involved with another handler, Rick Coster, who isn't here anymore, mm -hmm. and that was the beginning for me, and I met Randy during that time. Okay. And then when you guys started doing dogs together, what was the dynamic? Like, who did what? Was there a specific kind of We were breakdown? fortunate. We're kind of opposites, so we enjoyed... He dealt with the clients, and I dealt with the help and the dogs. Yeah. So there was like a division of roles, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Was it ever difficult maintaining personal life and professional life? No, no we never had that. That's cool. We so worked like well together. Yeah. And he told me when we got together, there was only one star in the family, and it was him. <laughs> <laughs> the truth is. <laughs> Well, and speaking of stars, you had some pretty major accomplishments in the world of dogs, right? Like, yeah, uh, we did. We had really good dogs. We were Sir fortunate to have good dogs. Top dogs. What were some of your, your most favorite dogs in the yeah. show? That would be difficult to answer. There were so many of them. Maybe the most uh, memorable. Wins, Wouldn't rankings. Gordon be your favorite, Dennis? Well, probably the, the what I'd have to say is one of my most exciting moments was when I brought it dog out in, um, at the Poodle Club of America and he was very exciting when he we finished him as a puppy he went home he was top dog in Europe um, and then he came back to our national and nobody had seen him as a grown-up when we brought him into the ring at Poodle Club of America I mean the crowd went crazy because he was very dynamic and he was great dog to show. But we have had many great dogs. We have this fabulous Dalmatian that we showed to number one. We've had um, we had the number one dog in the country, Traysan, which we showed a couple years straight and he was number one all the way. We had Soy Poodle that won many great wins. Actually she was a great road star. Oh, wow. When they called and said congratulations, you've won Quake Roads. Um, we kind of like said, what's that? We hung up and said, what's that? <laughs> we I thought it was great. Now. <laughs> now I'll tell you a really good story. Yeah. Uh-oh. So we, with that win, we had some friends, Bobby Peoples, and asked, he had one non-sporting, we asked him, what do we wear to the, to the dinner? Right. And he said, well, I'm wearing a tuxedo. And we thought, oh, really? <laughs> so... This was around 1984, 85. Yeah, 80, 84, 85. Um, and um, so we thought, all right, I had a black suit. He had. We were over at the garden when we asked him unloading that day. And he had a uh, dark green dinner jacket. But we thought, we can't afford tuxedos. You know, we were just starting out saving for the and kennel. We, we thought, couldn't afford anything. This was great. We'll never win it again. Yeah. We went over to Macy's. Yeah. 
and bought cummerbunds, yeah. bow ties, shirts, cufflinks, uh, um, all the accessories, but, but, yeah. the buttons, so everything. We looked pretty good. It wasn't we looked really good. Back we looked great. We woke up the next morning and we were set to go. Dennis, you'll never win again. Take all this stuff back. <laughs> So we took it all back. We took it all back and got our money back. Then we won it again and rented tux. Then we won it again. Maybe we better buy tuxes. <laughs> and it went from there because we did. We were fortunate enough to win many thousands. Wow. So what? What were some of the things that like you needed in a dog? Like when you're looking at a dog as a special, what were some qualities that you guys might think, think of? When we always thought they were promising and they had to prove themselves. We weren't ones to think, gee, this is going to be a top okay. winning dog. They had to prove themselves. It was like they started winning and they started taking off mm -hmm. and then you kind of saw where it's going from there. Yeah. And it does make us a little bit, and when you take it into the judging, yeah. it makes us a little bit of jaded because we have been able to show and have some of the top right. dogs. And so you're operating from that perspective. So perspective. in thinking... You know, even dogs that we breed at home, yeah. they really have to live up to a very high standard. Yeah. Because we were used to, at that point, having some of the best. Right. And, and that's what we're looking for. That. Right. And that makes it hard. Yeah. But also, at the same time, probably, does it make it easier to judge at the same time? Because you kind of have in your mind's eye what a dog could look like? Well, yes. And, like, we showed almost every breed in the toy and non Mm -hmm. from at some point throughout our careers and had many top ones yeah. in the in their breeds. And so we were able to have a good perspective and because we were always there and watching other dogs right. all day, the winners, and you learn well, about when the you other sit dogs. there and I mean how many of Jimmy Shepherds did we compete with over the years? We were right. fortunate to be there till the end of the day. Yeah. So I kind of even learned what I liked in Shepherds. Yeah. Or a lot, or like Peter Green. I mean, we competed with him till the end of the day, and we learned. But yeah. you learn, you know, from that experience, Even not just not about your own dogs. dogs. Mm -hmm. Plus, you have to learn your comp, know your competition, okay. and know where what show to go to next. Yeah. So, when you guys retired, did you go immediately into judging? What was that transition like? Painful for, for me. My book looked like Helen Keller did it because I felt so awkward. Really? I mean, and suddenly I was in the middle of the ring, and yeah. yeah, it was very awkward, I thought. Yeah. But for me, it was very difficult to Yeah, go. he was, for about two he years, he, wow. he had a tough go of it. Wow. That, that was the agreement with the last dog that we were okay. retiring, so. And we felt that we wanted to retire at the time. top, and yeah. it was time, and so we just did it. And we kept a big kennel because of the the breed of the breed we showed a lot of drop coated dogs as well but we boarded 40 to 50 dogs year round and help if it hadn't been for the japanese and at that point they were said mastered the art so to speak and it was getting harder because we usually had three or four japanese people living in the kennel and then outside local help that took care of the dogs and it was getting harder and harder to find help so we really now you would be hard pressed to find help to keep to 40 to 50 dogs yeah. and some of your help have gone on to be the members of their own now right oh yeah mm -hmm. very proud of you that's amazing when you um when you started judging, was it was it um, was it something that you wanted to go to all breeds from the beginning, or would you? I still do you don't enjoy want to go to Okay, do you like the specialties more so? You mean an all breed judge, or what? What was the question? going to going to be like an all breed judge doing all breeds? Oh, I have no weekend? inclination to ever do that at this point. I don't know about you, Dennis? Obviously, no, know. I don't. Yeah. <laughs> What are your favorite breeds to judge? Oh, wow. Well, any really good quality dog. Yeah. As long just, as it's a good one. As long as it's a good one, yeah. And, and the quality entry is, makes you really enjoy the judging. Sometimes it gets to be a struggle. Yeah. And I'd but rather as long judge as you can like. Come up with the good ones. You know. I'd rather weed through a nice. 60 or 70 Ridgeback entries, that's much more challenging than doing mm -hmm. the best in show. I mean, I much prefer that. Yeah, interesting. Or a really nice Whippet entry, yeah. you know, that's much more of a challenge. Mm -hmm. So, um, at this juncture, what would you say are the biggest pet peeves that you find in the from the universe? Is there anything that 
I can't tell you I have a pet peeve. That's good. I've gotten mixed results. <laughs> no, I can't tell you I've never had problems They're all with there to win. Yeah. And I'll, I understand I'll, that. I'll, uh, I'll accept a lot. You right. know, just don't snatch a ribbon and storm out of the ring. But I can understand if you're Everybody's a little upset. Disappointed Everybody's disappointed. Everybody wants to win. If they don't win. win, there's only so many winners. Yeah. And so, miles and and you, know, you know what it's like to be invested. Exactly. exactly. So I try to be really. Recently a handler kind of snatched a ribbon and stormed out of the ring and I said, when she didn't answer me, I said, thank you, but usually I'm very forgiving. Yeah. That's great. And, to, and here you guys are not judging. Well, no, right? we're here. We're here to help with take the lead. Poodle and seminar. And Poodle seminar. Poodle Club and America. I have Poodle Club of America um, board meeting. Mm -hmm. and so you're involved with a lot of education, yes. specifically with take the lead. Why don't you tell us a little bit more about what that is and, and what the purpose of the organization is? Well, I'm on the board of take though. the lead. We help dog people in life-threatening situations and two years ago we started a new mission of helping people like if their house burned down or something like that over 26 years we've dispersed uh, over five million dollars helping people and I'm very proud to be on the board I really am so you guys are really giving back to this board. it's a wonderful every dime that comes in goes out to help someone that's uh, and how's it's it been very going special. this weekend for you very good well, thank you so much for your time, guys. It was a pleasure thank you. talking with you. Our pleasure. And uh, we'll see this live on Canine Chronicle TV. Uh-oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>